guys, I'm Laurie Vitale, and on this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen, I'm so thrilled to be able to share with you my recipe for a paella, which has been requested here for literally years now, and till this day, people are still going, where's paella? Where is it? What's going on? We want it. We want to see your version of it. So today is your lucky day, because I'm going to bring you my version of it, which I think is really easy, incredibly delicious, and it kind of hits all the right notes of what I think a paella should taste like. Uh, now let me take you over the ingredients so you can get started. I need some boneless, skinless chicken thighs cut into about bite-sized pieces, some chicken stock, a border rice, I'll talk about this in a minute, some finely chopped onion, garlic, this is some Spanish-style chorizo that's been cut into little coins, smoked paprika, some saffron threads, these are some chopped canned tomatoes, olive oil, salt and pepper, these are just the ingredients to make the base, and then I'll show you the additional ingredients that are going to go in at the end. Now, before some people get all upset and head over to the keyboard to type really angrily that this is not authentic paella, I'm not saying it is. This is just my version of it. So please refrain from all of those comments and fighting back and forth about what's authentic and what's not. I've never been to Spain. I wish. I mean, it's on my to-do list. But this is just my recipe for it. And so many of you have been requesting this recipe. And to be honest, that's part of the reason why I've been holding off on making it. Just because I don't feel like hearing a lot of people complain about it. So, uh, because I know some people do like to complain if something is not Italian, like tacos. <coughs> it's not authentic. But I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying this is my version of it. So, that's my rant. Don't even comment. Don't even leave it behind. It's done. Now, for the rice, traditionally you should use bomba rice or Valencia rice or uh, paella rice. But if you live in a small town like I do, it is hardly ever going to happen that I can find paella rice in my local supermarket. I usually have to order it online. So most of the time I just use arborio rice or risotto rice, which works just as well in my opinion. Any short grain rice will work fine. Now the key to paella. I think is the right pan. Now this is a paella pan. It's really nice and wide, it's shallow, and this allows for the mixture to cook in one single layer and the rice gets that toasty brown deliciousness at the bottom that a paella should have. That's from having it at restaurants anyway. So now I've got my pan here. Now notice that this is a really large pan, so if you're making a smaller batch, use this a smaller skillet. You just want to make sure it's everything is going to cook in a single layer. Now, my burner is obviously not big enough for this entire pan, so ha you know, while this is all cooking, I'm going to rotate it around just to make sure it cooks evenly. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some olive oil to my pan here that's been preheating over about medium-high heat. Now, you can use vegetable oil, if, vegetable oil if you want to. I'm just using regular olive oil, not extra virgin. I'm going to add in my chicken. And I'm going to let my chicken cook just so it gets nice and brown. And as you can see, like that's just the chicken. Once you add the onion and the chorizo and the garlic and the rice, everything just is going to get built up beautifully. Season this with salt and pepper and let it cook until it's lovely golden brown on all sides. It doesn't have to be cooked all the way through, but you just want good color on it. That looks good enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the chicken so it's not in the middle which is where the hottest part is of the skillet. Oh, I'm excited. Add a touch more olive oil, not too much, maybe a couple tablespoons. And we're going to add in the onion. I'm telling you, when this is cooking, you might, just might want to leave the room because it smells incredible in here. Oh, so, get the onion get my garlic, and I'm just going to cook this, stirring it constantly, really, for, I don't know, about five minutes, or until the onion starts to cook down, and the chorizo starts releasing all of its lovely flavor. And that's it, really. This is looking fantastic. I'm going to turn the heat down to about medium, add in my rice and my smoked paprika. Now you want to make sure you get a really nice sweet smoked paprika. Really adds to that smoky flavor. Now I've had paella quite a few times in you know restaurants and the one time I had it, it actually was cooked with rabbit and a little unusual and it had calamari in it and I've usually had it with um, mussels and shrimp and clams, the seafood part. But I tell you, it was delicious. Now, I used to eat rabbit when I was a, uh, a kid, when I grew up in Italy. But I don't consume it so much anymore unless I go out to a good restaurant. 
But that was a fantastic twist on a paella that I had never had before. And I found out that that's actually the, the, the meat that they used to use when paella was first you know, invented or created or whatnot. I'm just tossing my rice all in my lovely juices. Wonderful. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my tomatoes, which this is just a little bit of like chopped canned tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes if you want to. You don't need that much. My chicken stock. Looks like a lot, but it is going to be absorbed. And you see why it's really important to have a really big pan. And it's not too crowded, otherwise you're going to end up with soup. And now we're going to add in the saffron. Now saffron's a bit pricey, so go ahead and add a large pinch of it. If you're going to spend the money on it, you might as well use a, enough that you can actually taste its unique flavor. Alright, now what's going to happen is I've got this over about medium heat. When this comes up to a boil, I'm going to cover this. And I'm just going to use um, like a little pizza pan here because I don't have anything that's big enough to cover this besides that. Once this comes to a boil, turn it down to medium low, let it cook for about 20 minutes. You want the rice to be about 8 to 10 minutes away from being fully cooked, which I'll show you what that looks like once it's there, but otherwise, just keep an eye on it. And also, like I'm going to anyway, I'm going to rotate the pan every about 5-6 minutes or so that everything cooks nice and evenly, and that's it. I just uncovered my rice. It's been cooking for about 15 minutes. It's about 8 to 10 minutes away from being fully cooked. And as you can see, it's absorbed all that stock. You also want to keep some on hand just when you check it. If it's reduced too much too soon, you can add a little splash. Just make sure you keep it warm. Now, this is looking perfect. Now, you don't want this to be a risotto. This should be dried a little bit more, and it will be. Now, let's turn this back up to about medium. Let's talk seafood. What I have here are some shrimp that have been peeled and deveined, but I've left the tail on. And I'm just going to take them. A little piece was stuck on me. Actually, before I do that, let me turn this down. I'm just going to take my shrimp, and I'm going to put them all over the top. You can, at this point, do this in, like, in a decorative manner if you prefer, so you can just bring it to the table as is. Now, I did want to mention that this is fantastic to make, you know, for a summer party, because you can make this on the grill. And your grill's got such a large surface, it'll cook, it'll cook beautifully. You can even make this on a fire pit. And then there you go. Then I also have some mussels and some clams that I've got scrubbed and soaked so that they're nice and cleaned. You can always ask your fishmonger to do that. He should be happy to do it. I'm trying to nestle these in here. And then I'm just going to pretty much do the same thing with my mussels and my clam. I'm just going to scatter them about, nestling them in. I'm going to cook this mixture for about 10 minutes or until the shellfish is fully cooked and they've opened up beautifully. Might not even need all of these. I did get some extras, but my husband loves seafood, specifically mussels and clams. So that's why I got a few extras. All right. Why leave them out? Might as well, right? And then you've got your clams. Now the clams, I'm probably not going to put all of them in there. These are little neck clams, but little manila clams would be beautiful as well. All right. And that's looking good. I've got my frozen peas that have been defrosting here on the side. Just scatter these all over the top. And when you fork this all together, it's going to be beautiful. Okay. Lid back on. Medium heat, about 10 minutes or until all the shellfish is cooked. Rotate the pan halfway through so that it cooks nice and evenly, and we are going to be in the home run. We're just going to need to season this with a little salt and pepper when we're done. Decorate it with some fresh parsley and lemon wedges. Business, baby. Be ready to eat. This is amazing. Now, what I've done is I've taken off the lid, cranked the heat up way too high. And now, you could have left everything beautifully arranged. I don't like anything perfect. Get to my nerves. I want it to look family style. I want it to look beautiful. Now, when you turn it way up to high, this rice starts to cook and get toasty like that and brown. And that is essential in a good paella, from what I've had anyway. So, turn it way up. That looks amazing. I'm going to season this with some salt and pepper. I've already tasted it for some seasoning, but it does just need a little bit more. We're going to add in a good amount of parsley, some freshness. Mm. I'm excited about dinner. Give this a good stir. You can see the rice gets all beautifully nutty. 
and delicious. And that's it. I'm just going to turn this off. Now I'm just going to scatter some lemon wedges all around. Now tell me that doesn't look incredible. Ah, I'm pumped about this. I'm just going to sprinkle some lemon juice right here. That's going to be where I go in with my fork and give it a try. I was going to say shot and try at the same time, so I'm going to give it a try. I want a piece of the chorizo, rice. Mm. Slap me and call me your mama. That is a money maker. Wow, that's delicious. I'm thrilled to have shared this recipe with you. I hope that you enjoy as much as I do. I cannot wait till my doorbell rings and my friends show up because it's going to make me look like I am a rock star. I put so much thought into this and work, and it really wasn't that work, much work at all. It kind of cooks itself. Another great thing about this, it really stretches a buck with the seafood. I mean, I, all I used was a little bit of seafood, and this will feed eight people easily. Go to thelionekitchen.com to get this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Let me know what your favorite flavorings are in a traditional paella, or your version of it anyway. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.